Hi everybody. So something really exciting is happening in the world of 3D printing and it's been happening over sort of over the last year or two, something like that. There's been a huge explosion of interest in it and of course this has led to an explosion in the machines that you can buy. I looked on this morning on Amazon and there was a filament printer machine for £127. If you think about it in today's terms, that's actually peanuts really. I mean they do go up to 10,000 and plus but of course what's happening is they're falling into three ranges. They're sort of low, mid, high range machines, of course. Now a low range machine is probably going to be in the range of sort of 100 to 500 ish. Then you're looking at 500 and up to say 3000 ish and then 4000 and above it's going to be a high end. And of course as that changes you're going to get changes in the machine. So one of the significant changes is going to be build quality, selection of materials, its range of materials it can print with because a low end machine is going to print successfully with things like PLA and ABS. If you want to use more engineering kind of materials like um, carbon fibre added into your PLA or, or glass fibre or maybe metal printing, that sort of thing, you're going to be wanting to get into that mid-range and above to be able to print successfully with those kind of materials because they do have different requirements that some of the lower range machines have difficulty in coping with and that would be why you would be looking at more of a mid-range machine and Chidi is this company here, it's QIDI, I think I've pronounced it right, have sent me this thing which is their X-Max 3X and if I look at it it's actually about the size of a small washing machine and weighs about 38 kilos. So it's a tank of a machine. It costs about a thousand pounds, which I'm expecting a pretty nice machine when we open this box. And according to the advertising, it can cope easily with those engineering materials. So let's get it out of the box and have a bit of a better look at it. Okay, that's it on the desk. Now it comes pre-assembled, but that's not the same thing as ready to use because for shipping there are some cable ties and screws in there and we'll go through that in a minute but it comes with this extra little pack here of uh well it's tools basically actually here's accessories box one i've already taken the feet out to use it there but there's a screwdriver we've got a scraper We've got this bit, which is the really interesting bit, because this is the alternative hot end. Fitted is your standard copper hot end. This is a hardened steel hot end for carbon fibre, glass fibre and filaments with inclusions in it. And if you want to run those, then you would replace the hot end with that. There's the little book, and this bit's important. This is the uh, build plate levelling pad that we also need. Then we've got the rest of our tools we'll be using in a minute and Wi-Fi cable, spare fuses and screws. And here is the second box. Now it did have the power cable in here which I've taken out. That is the spool holder that goes on the back. That's some free filament that sent half a kilo of black PLA plus and some glue so you can stick it to the bed if you're having problems. That's on that side. If we turn that over, or rather take it out, what we get is this. This is a really interesting bit actually. This bit is a case for sensitive filaments. Okay, back to the front and turn it on. When you first turn it on, you've got a booting up process in the screen here. First thing is, select the language. And then it will remind you to remove all those bits. So, um, do some snips, take out the ties. And undo the four bolts that you can see. The bed will move up and it will remind you to remove any packing foam. You'll be able to see packing foam under there. We'll wait for it to heat up and we're going to do the Z offset, which is what we need this bit of paper for. Okay, so the offset adjustment is actually really pretty easy. It tells you what to do right there. So we make sure that we put that bit of plastic between the bed and the nozzle. And then we've got these adjustment points here. And we press the up arrow or down arrow and give that little bit of plastic a tug until you can feel the friction. And that's it. 
Once you've done that and press the continue arrow, it'll begin its auto leveling sequence and that's nine by nine. So it takes 81 points. And it measures the distance to the bed and then it can use that as a map of the bed to make sure that everything's level. Okay, it takes about 10 minutes to do that and then it'll run something called Input Shaper. There's no progress bar on it, it just runs it and it sounds a bit like an aeroplane taking off. But once it's finished that, it'll tell you it's time to load the filament and that's why we're back at the back of the machine. The filament just hangs on there and I'm using PLA Plus. So we feed it through the filament tube right there, which is like an external Bowden tube. And you just push it through the sensor, which is this bit here, and we've got to push it all the way to the extruder, which goes to that blue tube, and so it's got to go all the way here. So it's a, quite a distance you're going to be shoving that. Now this bit where we've got that, that's just the tube holder that we saw before, clips in there, but that section is where This goes. If we're using a sensitive filament, it fits on there and the filament goes in there. But we're just using PLA Plus, so we shove that up until we feel the resistance. Okay, so I'm just going to set that to 220 because I'm using PLA Plus. If it's not a preset, then use the plus and the minus to put it at 220. Click the next button and then it'll heat up the nozzle. Now, one of the remarkable things about this is how quickly that nozzle heats. And when you heat, hot it'll ask you to press a down arrow on the screen you press that and they should extrude the filament okay let's have a look at the front screen it's a five inch color screen and this is the home screen and you can see it's giving you information here these are the temperatures of the nozzle the bed and the chamber and we've got some um, minor control sound off and on light off and on then we've got information about the system it's clearly running on clipper and then we've got these other th icons right here where we can have a look at the files, what's in the files preloaded. There's a Benji in here, incidentally, and then we can go to the settings. And you see the settings are pretty much what you kind of expect them to be. We've got control over the Z height here, the X and the Y position. We've got the loading of the filament right there. We've got a calibration where we can run the auto bed leveling again. And then we've got the network, because remember this has Wi-Fi. Now it's picking up my network right there. So if I enter my network and enter my password, it'll log on to the network and it does that pretty easily. I tend to run these machines as standalone by putting a USB in. The reason is I just want them to run without actually taxing resources for everything else I do because obviously I do a lot of video processing and that can take up a lot of computer cycles whereas this one by using it standalone won't tax anything else. But you may want it on your network because of course you can run it from the network and transfer the files by using it to, uh, through your computer to run that way directly. It's just my tendency not to, but it's really easy to get it at network access if you want and that's how you do it. But that's the setup all finished and I mean it's kind of where you'd expect. It's a few minutes out of the box and you've got a couple of ties and you're off. You're ready to run. Now the software itself is on this USB stick that comes with the machine and it's pusher slicer not cure slicer. So we'll load that up and have a look at that in another video. But it goes in the top here when you're transferring files from your PC to this machine. The USB port is right there and the USB stick is um, really sneak connected between the two of them. But having this machine being so tremendously heavy of course it's really kind of important to be honest because this head remember it's zipping around at 600 millimeters per second with an acceleration of 2000 millimeters per second so if it wasn't a heavy duty machine it would shake itself off the table so being heavy or metal construction is really what you're looking for and those upgraded components of course give you a great deal more security they do add to the price but they give you a great deal more security and expandability because this can handle engineering materials materials that other machines have great difficulty handling. Now that hot end where you've got the ability to swap it over is a great thing as well and this box here that heats up means that you've got a much more controlled environment that the plastic is cooling down in and so warpage and shrinkage and lifting from the bed plate is not nearly the problem that it is on other machines when you have something like a controlled chamber. In here we have a, a filter, activated carbon filter that blows out the back. So I tend not to print ABS because it's all a bit stinky and all my stuff's in my house. But with this 
then ABS becomes much more of a possibility for me because it's going to clean the air before it blows it out whereas on open frames of course it's just filling your room full of fumes. So lots of these um, additions here that have made this more expensive have made it um, more usable across a wider range. I mean the print bed in here for example is six millimeters aluminium. That's a very sturdy print bed and the magnets on there are really strong and it doesn't have a soft surface it's got a hard surface so the print plate the flexible steel print plate really snaps into place. So in terms of where this machine places itself as a mid-range next level up machine then from what I can tell it's actually good value for money. It's got an awful lot of things going for it and the price for what it's offering seems very reasonable to me. But of course the proof of these things is in using them and all we've really done is unbox it and set it up and we will be using this more and of course we'll do more videos on using it. First of all the software and then do some prints on it then we'll do some of the exotic materials on it and see what we can come up with. But I hope you enjoyed the setting up video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.